Welcome to the water chapter of the four-part series that I'm going to be putting on my channel, Why Goldfish Die. A lot of people's goldfish die within the first couple of weeks because there's not enough beneficial bacteria on the filter, which is essential because the beneficial bacteria help to neutralize the toxins that the fish produce. Even if you have a large culture of beneficial bacteria on your filter, it's not going to neutralize all the toxins. And that is why water changes are very important also helps to remove the growth inhibiting hormone that the fish give off. That hormone is known as somatostatin. I really hope I pronounced that right. There's your I'm trying to sound smart word of the day. Needless to say, doing water changes is essential if you want your fish to grow. Now, plants, real ones, do help to remove some of the toxins the fish produce. The problem is these little buggers love destroying plants. They don't always do, but they often do. They just can't help themselves. They're kind of like little alcoholics. Uh, Luke from Luke's Goldies, he's done this as well, where he has a pothos plant. The main plant is above the tank and only the roots are in the water. That is an excellent solution to the problem because now you get the benefits of a plant without these little buggers destroying it. To get back to my point, you have to do water changes. These are very messy fish. I run into this issue so many times I've lost count where a client will contact me or a person who just wants my help, not necessarily that they buy anything from me, which is okay. They start having health issues with their fish and they don't understand why because their fish was fine for three years in the pond. What happens is the toxins build up to the point where the fish's immune system can't handle it anymore. And then they begin to get ravaged by the diseases. Kind of like your aunt when she was discovering herself in college. She was the cool aunt though, always shared some of her weed before she went to jail. Doing 20% water changes once every two weeks is not enough. 10% Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That is really ideal. You definitely want to remove minimum 30% of your water per week. I don't recommend doing a larger water change if you are on city water because there's often chlorine in it. The more water you have to put back, the more chlorine is potentially going to get in. I will say, however, if you're using some sort of pipe or hose to connect the tap to your tank, don't have it underneath the water because then it's not going to aerate and aeration helps to dissipate the chlorine. It has happened before where people have killed fish because they added too much chlorine water and it didn't dissipate properly. Another issue with your water is if you don't clean your filters regularly, like once a week, it's going to build up too much nasties. And what happens, instead of cleaning your water, it's going to end up poisoning your fish. Now, there are people who will say you shouldn't do your filter cleanings and water changes on the same day because you're going to remove too much beneficial bacteria. There is really such a negligent amount of beneficial bacteria in your main tank. The majority is going to be on your filter, and that's the most important part. Now, I can't speak to tropicals on their sensitivity because that's outside of my area of expertise. With koi and goldfish, you can clean your filter and do a water change on the same day. The amount of beneficial bacteria you're going to lose is negligible. The second reason how water could lead to the death of your fish is a lack of oxygen. In this instance, I would highly recommend sponge filters because not only would it filter your water, but it would also help create bubbles. If you see your fish sucking on top of the water for air, that is a last ditch desperate attempt, not that they can actually get oxygen from the air itself. They don't have lungs. They can't physically do that. Think of it like a person trapped underneath the ice sucking on that ice. It's a futile attempt. You're not going to go very far. You will also have less issues if you have a proper tank. I'm going to get into that in the tank section of the series. If your pH is too alkaline or acidic, that can also kill fish. You can just add bicarbonate of soda or baking soda. It's the same thing to the water and that's going to stabilize your pH. If your water is too acidic, this is a great fix and you don't have to worry about the bicarbonate of soda pushing the pH so far up that it becomes alkaline. It's a nice stabilization factor and it also helps medicine work a bit better. What can happen sometimes, especially if you have an outside pond, rain has a very low carbonate hardness. If most of your pond water gets replaced by rainwater, the chances of having a pH crash can increase. And what that looks like is you'll get to your pond and a bunch of your fish 
are starting to go belly up. That is a good sign that your water is the culprit. Then lastly, temperature can also kill fish. If you move a fish from a cold tank too quickly to a hot tank without acclimatizing them properly, that could send the fish into shock and that could also make them die. So you take your plastic bag with the fish in it and you drift it on top of your tank until the temperature of the tank is relatively the same as the temperature in the bag. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. And of course, the same goes for moving from a hot tank to a cold tank. They can also, much like pH, handle a wide temperature range. However, if the temperature gets up to about 30 degrees Celsius, that's too hot. You're gonna lose some fish. If it gets to about five degrees Celsius, very cold, that's also gonna kill some fish, especially the more fancy varieties. Lastly, when you do bring a new fish home, don't put the bag water into your tank. Some time has passed, there's probably a lot of ammonia in that bag and you don't need that in your tank water. Just after the fish is acclimatized, take it out and put it into the tank. 